I, I don't belong here because I barely knew Ben. I had a couple of lunches with him, and then I exchanged emails with him about the piece he published with, with the Manila Review. And then we started talking about Jojo. He was always concerned about Jojo Abinades. Um, his slight bouts of grief, his slight bouts of truculence, Ben would write me about that. Um, I do, however, know Ben through his students. And um, you, you learn a lot about the teacher through, through his students because they end up trying, uh, teaching and mentoring like him. Um, my first, uh, first Cornelian I met was June Aguilar. Uh, who was one of my mentors as an undergraduate student, and then he made sure I met Jojo Abinales. So when I did my PhD, it was under the external supervision of Jojo Abinales. And um, through my relationship with Jojo Abinales, I got sent, shipped off to Kyoto to work with um, Carol Howe, currently on a postdoc. So, and, and, and throughout that journey, I've met other Cornelians who've also commented on my work from um, uh, Dominic Coet and also Vince Rafael, who's here. And, and I want to remember Ben through these people. And I think from, from the little that I know about Ben, Ben would be proud of the fact that his students are mentoring the way he mentored. And I learned a number of things from his students. Number one uh, is the personal question to its logical extent, regardless of what it does to your ideological leanings or to your stress levels. Um, I remember the, the, the first time I finished my, a, a copy of my dissertation and I sent it to George. And George sent it back to me and said, um, before you read it, you have to know that I destroyed it. Uh, and, and he said that I destroyed it because Ben would destroy every single thing we sent to him. And if you want proof, I can send you the hundred and notes that Ben gave me. And I still keep those notes until now. Many times I would play the Cornelians of each other. I would say, um, you know, Jojo, Vince said this, do you agree? Uh, and Jojo would say, ah, if it's more work, do it. Do what Vince tells you to do. Or I, 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 I would say like, um, Carol, you know, you didn't say this, but Jojo is saying this. Maybe I can skip this because you, because you said it was okay. And she, she'd be like, oh, no, no, no. If Jojo says that, do it. Um, and, so, and so if one tells me to, if one, if one person says, pursue American studies, pursue American studies. One, one person says, pursue Spaniards, pursue Spaniards. So, so I can understand why a, lot of the stud why, why a lot of Ben's students ended up doing 20, like, uh, you know, Journal articles that would last, that would extend to 25,000 words. Um, and then the second thing I learned from all these Cornelians was, of course, compare. And it's not just geographic comparison, but also range. Um, one of the things that Carol says she learned from Ben is range. And it's a range in terms of not just the countries you look at, but also range in terms of the languages you speak, I failed in that respect. Range also in terms of the disciplines that you, uh, that, that, that you, that you get into. My favorite memory of, of, my, of the person I'm working with now, Carol Howe, is being led to her office and, and being shown a, a big shelf. And Carol, as you know, is a literary studies expert, and she said, look at this shelf. It's a shelf full of macroeconomic books, uh, textbooks on macroeconomics. I taught myself macroeconomics this year. I think you should do the same thing too. <laughs> uh, and I think that's, and, and, then, and, then you, and then you ask, you inevitably ask these people, why, why do you do things that are outside your comfort zone? And that's because Ben Anderson told us to, oh. to do things outside our comfort zone. And so, and so if you talk to Carol these days, she will happily engage you in a discussion about the Phillips curve, the developmental state, inflation in post-war Philippines, and she's obsessed with that now. Um, and I'm sure Carol and Ben had a lot of conversations about this as well. And then finally, um, know your audience. Um, I think a lot of Ben students have made a conscious effort to make sure that even if they're doing world-class work that they're publishing in the Philippines and that their primary audience is a Filipino audience. And, and the, temptation for, the temptation to not do this in this, in this day and age, especially when, when you know, Philippine academia doesn't pay well, nobody reads books in the Philippines, the distribution will not be as good, the, the temptation to not publish with Philippine publishers is quite high. Um, but if you look at the works of, of people like Carol and people like Jojo, the, the, the primary publisher is always um, Anvil or always Ateneo. And the reason, the reason why they're doing this is because Ben chose, uh, would always publish with Andal or, or with Atene. I, I, I remember I, I, I had a conversation. Somebody posted a tribute to Ben online, and um, the tribute to Ben was a tribute from Tariq Ali. And this guy is someone I would call an aesthetic Marxist. You know, he, he liked the fact that Marxism made his, look more, his work more sophisticated. And so, of course, he would post uh, Tariq Ali's tribute to Ben Anderson on 
from from the London Review of Books, and and and, and uh, I, I just have to comment and say this is not the Ben I want to remember, the, the Ben of theory, the Ben of Marxism. I think that the Ben I want to remember is the Ben that published that very small volume with Ateneo Press. Nobody reads. Huh? Why why counting why counting counts? Um, and it's an investment to not just the students in Southeast Asia, but also to the intellectual scene in Southeast Asia, which he, which he continues to revitalize through his work, and from my perspective, from his students. So, so indirect, so, so thank you, Ben, for, for the gift of Carol Howe, for the gift of John Jovenanis, for the gift of June Aguilar. Um, thank you indirectly. Um, thanks, everyone.